Yamuna Pushta in Delhi was one of the oldest and largest slums in India. In reality, a chain of 22 small slums located on a 3km stretch along the Yamuna River. This settlement was home to 40,000 families. It housed more than 150,000 people and was in existence for decades. Yamuna Pushta was virtually a township where a world within a world existed. In the guise of resettlement, encroachment, pollution and beautification of the city, in early 2004, in a matter of weeks, 40,000 homes were demolished without any rehabilitation plan. 120,000 people were left to the mercy of the cruel streets. But the main issue is not just about demolitions. The point of concern is, why do we allow a situation to arise where mass scale and ruthless demolitions have to be resorted to. A number of questions were left unanswered. A slum could be uh, defined as uh, a place usually within an urban settlement populated by poorer people and invariably migrants into the urban situation because of helplessness back home and uh, the incapacity to afford a better place of living within the urban milieu. Why do we force those who are instrumental in building the very foundations of every city and who work and toil for our comfort and pleasure. Why do we compel them to live in the most abyssal conditions and then when it takes our fancy, even demolish their humble homes and their very future? Research indicates that in another 40 years, every third person living on planet Earth will be a slum dweller. Why are we forcing families to live in slums? No one is enforcing law, so people can come and squat anywhere they like. And then there is slum politics, you know. Okay. People like to create boat banks. Well, because we neglected them. Uh, we didn't have a plan for them. We let them be. I think it was callous governance. Uh, the problem is that the planning has by and large tended to really seriously underestimate the number of poor people who come to the city to live and work. Okay. And as a result, the availability of legal housing, mm. of uh, places where poor people can come and settle down and either buy a plot of land or rent a place okay. is much lower than what the demand is. So it uh, basically forces people to go down and come to the city and to settle in, in a slum. You are not addressing the central issue of the formation of the slum, mm. which is poverty and access to work. The other is the conscious policies of the government, mm. where you know, big companies are taking over land, mm. hmm? whether it's agricultural land or just forest land. Okay. I mean, it's happening in Odisha, it's happening in Jharkhand, it's happening in Bundelkhand. So, they are stuck. So those are the people who are bound to migrate. Artisans and weavers. Hiralal belonged to the famous Rana Pratap clan. He lived with his wife and ten children. And his forefathers were decoits and later on became street entertainers. So at that time, we had to eat food, 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 eat food. अब जो है वहाँ से निकल के हम लोग जो है दिल्ली शहर के अंदर आए तो कुछ शिक्षा प्रवृत्त बच्चों के लिए कर रहा है तो अब जो सरकार है वापस हमें उसी जंगलात के नीति से भेज रहे हैं तो हमें फिर वही अपने बच्चे भी नहीं बिचारे नहीं होंगे पढ़े लिखे भी नहीं होंगे मील न होती हमारे से मजदूर काम न करते तो आज ये कपड़े कहाँ से पहनते 
आज इनके घर में हमारी माँ बहने झाड़ू नहीं लगाती बर्तन नहीं मांजती कपड़े नहीं धोते धो भी ना होते तो आज ये कपड़े साफ पहन सकते थे हंड्रेड थाउजेंड पीपल सिटी वर्क इन दिटी कलेक्ट द डेली वेस्ट विच द म्यूनिसपैलिटी इज अनेबल टू डू एंड दे रिसाइकल ऑलमोस्ट टेन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द अदर वेस्ट पेपर मेटल इवन टॉक्सिक वेस्ट which we the city doesn't have the way with all to uh, do anything with so i think they are uh, they are a fantastic service provider to the city but they consider it illegal uh, they are they living in shanty towns as such as the ones you see across the city there delhi as a city totally depends on working class people to be there um, any house in a well to do colony uh, has at least four or five people who come in to clean yeah. uh, look after children wash the car you know cook etc etc so if you look at the domestic requirement of labor and along with that you look at all the petty services courier services um people you know running rickshaws etc we talk about a very very large service population that this city absolutely depends on and if this population were not to exist delhi as a city would stop existing in a rational planning of town you need every section of the people true if you want a city to run uh, smoothly then provision for this day has to be made in the plan today livelihood and residence are connected earlier wherever person reside had his livelihood in the village you had the farm or what worked on it true is not so now wherever your livelihood takes you you reside you reside that a person with no transportation no means of livelihood would like to work at a place which is next to him mahamantri mukundri ne kaha tha ye ki garibi hatao to garibo ki jaan garibi ke sath mein garibo ko hatane ki koshish kar liya garibo ko maarne ke liye apart from the wretched stance on rural development or the lack of it the growth and prevalence of slums in most developing countries is due to the non implementation of the master plan or the town housing plan The first master plan actually was a very progressive plan. Okay. It recognized uh, environmental areas. It recognized the need to accommodate the poor in the city. Okay. It recognized the importance of uh, providing flatted factories and small industries and so on. Okay. The problem has been that a lot of the things that been proposed in the plan has never been implemented. Okay. Previous master plans have not been complied with. They have been no. consistently violated uh, by the very people who are actually supposed to be implementing the plan but there are two main problems one that the master plan has systematically underestimated the number of poor people who need housing in the city okay. in fact it's done that to the extent that even uh, the the census figures for what delhi's projected population is going to be in the future mm. have not been respected because right now they are seeing the master plan as a document which deals with land management mm. and it barely deals with the issues of poverty and it barely deals with issues of social amenities okay. okay it does make provision for social amenities mm. but in the current scenario it seems to be largely driven by the by the market which is the money market there is a serious gap between the uh, numbers that are supposed to be built on paper for economically weaker sections and the numbers that are actually built so we find that uh, dda for instance has built uh, 300% more housing that is three times more housing for higher income groups okay. than what it was required to by the master plan so there is need for change and there is a provision within the master plan there is a legal provision legal route through which they can change the provision uh, for land uses in the plan okay and this has happened almost 400 times in the last year and whenever the government wants to promote a scheme okay or to accommodate a scheme hmm. for an quote accommodate a scheme okay. then they change the land use The master plan is an indicative document. It has no legal sanction. So, okay. if you look at Delhi's growth, uh, when the Asian Games happened in Delhi in 1982, mm. the biggest violations of the master plan were done right then by the DDA, which is the authority that is vested with the power to actually responsibility of uh, implementing the master plan. So, what prompted the judiciary and the authorities to demolish 40,000 homes and displace 150,000 people without even bothering? to work out a rehabilitation plan what compelled the beacon of hope and justice to pass an order that made thousands of families homeless and threw 20% of those whose homes had been demolished onto a barren piece of land land far away from civilization 
and any hope of earning a livelihood the first ground was that uh, this was an illegal colony which had come up on government land this land was not owned by these people secondly i think the perception was that uh, this is causing a uh, lot of nuisance and pollution in the river when yamuna flows through delhi what contributes to its major pollutants so yamuna is a 1200 km river okay. and uh, delhi is about only 22 km flows through but 80% of the pollution whole river okay. is contributed uh, when it flows through delhi okay. there are two classes of pollutants one is in sewage in a household sewage okay. second is industrial uh, sewage which is mixed with the household sewage So we're not even 100 meters from where Yamuna has entered Delhi, and the situation is extremely, extremely worse over here. Uh, Central Pollution Control Board says that the water quality is E-class, which means leave alone human beings. It's not even fit for animals to bathe in. What is this here? This is Najafgarh drain. Delhi, uh, Delhi's Yamuna, when it started at Wazirabad, it literally stopped at Wazirabad. And what actually flows into Yamuna are these 18 similar drains. So the Najafgarh drain actually pumps somewhere around 1,300 million liters of wastewater every day. Uh, the same drain at one point of time was was actually a river, which none of us know. There was something called Sahibi River, and now what we see made out of a Sahibi River is just a black drain. You have acid flowing in this. You have mixed metals flowing in this. This is agricultural waste, industrial waste. Uh, the muck that is coming from our flush so everything is is actually here in in this particular drain and all these 18 drains make compose yamuna in delhi if you see there were studies done on how much pollution the slum dwellers okay. caused okay. it was less than 1% of the total pollution in the river and slum dwellers basically don't have water to drink hmm. so people who don't have water to drink can't create sewage yeah. sewage comes from people who consume water and most of the uh, uh, water is consumed Uh, in the city, in the richer parts of the city itself. So this is just, uh, to me, it seems like it's a lame reason. Right now, for example, we have we have come on a day which is a Mahavasya, mm. and uh, there are these uh, homeless people who bathe in the river. You'll find thousands and thousands of people who bathe in the river. Lots and lots of people who drink the same black water, Sada Kal Kala Pani, that we that that we call. Of course, people bathing in out of their religious faith. people with flashy cars stop their car there on the bridge and dump their garbage in the river so from the bridge it's dumped here and they clean it they clean it because it's a livelihood for them so there's a personal connection there's an economic connection that they make with the river and they're the one who are actually in true sense the river keepers and not those people who 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 are educated in our age सारा पॉलिटिक्स की वजह से अगर पॉलिटिक्स नहीं होता तो जब इलेक्शन के बाद भी हो सकता था क्योंकि 10 साल से जमना गंदी हो रही है तो आज एक दो महीने में क्या प्रॉब्लम थी इनको the other side of it is that it's an illegal settlement because that is not land that they're supposed to be on their squatters so in that sense um legally they have no right to be there uh, the third thing is that that is an area that is the flood plain of the yamuna and uh, to for ecological reasons there should be no buildings on that flood plain 
which means that not only should the Yamuna Pushta people not be there for their own safety, because this is an area that gets flooded, but no building of any sort, including the Akshadharm temple, the four power plants that are on the Yamuna, uh, the Delhi government secretariat, none of these should be there at all. Okay. So there are good reasons for moving buildings away from the Yamuna Pushta, which means not only slum dwellers, but everybody else who is there on the floodplain. And I think the president inaugurated it. President, Prime Minister, both had gone. Yeah. So how do we look at the legality and illegality of these things? Mm -hmm. Metro station is coming near there. Mm -hmm. Commonwealth Games village is coming near there. So when it comes to using the same land, it's okay. It's okay. When it comes to the poor, well, they don't have an entitlement. Scenic farm can go on, you know, surviving for times immemorial. Nobody is going to destroy scenic farm. Akshardham. <coughs> it is an organized construction. It is not a disorganized construction. And it was done with a proper planning, with proper approval of the DDA. It was sanctioned and the Supreme Court upheld when somebody went and did petition against it. It was upheld. The DDA has changed the land use mm. of the riverbed. Uh, about 42 hectares of land on the riverbed mm. where Akshar Dham and, uh, and the Commonwealth Games and all are going to come mm. into uh, public and semi-public use. Akshar Dham is on land which has been allotted to okay. this Akshar Dham society. Mm. Of course, in what manner and what circumstances it was allotted is another story mm. because quite clearly all environmental norms were thrown to the winds. Now, if the river bed, certain portion of the river bed has been earmarked for channelization, where you reclaim the land, reclaim the land as you reclaim the sea, and then you put up an organized settlement with proper sanitation, proper facilities and so on, proper games. So this is in the overall public interest. If these facilities, because they are seen to be part of the corporate structure of the city, hmm. can enjoy the privilege of having water supply, electricity and a sewage treatment system, hmm. Why can't it be provided also to other citizens, the citizens who are uh, living in the Yamuna Pusha area? A citizen here in India, born in India, at least entitled to one site, home site. So he is not going to get in Bangladesh or Pakistan or Nepal or Sri Lanka if he doesn't get it. He is in his homeland. Now this issue is not being addressed at all. Only a very legalistic view is being taken that this land belongs to the government. Mm. All right, land belongs to government. To whom does the, do the people belong? So it is ultimately a question of values. And that's why I said, whose side are we on? Is the question to be asked. And answered unambiguously. When the state is not able to provide accommodation, land, housing, People have to provide for them. अगर सरकार ऐसे भी मारना चाहती है, तो हमें लेन बाई लेन खड़ा करके गोली मार दे, बम डाल दे, हम मर जाएंगे, मतलब वहाँ जाना हमें पसंद नहीं है। तो हमको ये सरकार जो है, वाकई में हम जो डकेदार भी थे, डकेदी करते थे लोग हम लोग, और ये लोग वही सरकार ये हमें वो डकेदी के रूप में वापस लाना चाह past, present and the future of the children and families ruthlessly bulldozed to the ground. Yamuna Pushta did not come up overnight. It existed in the heart of the capital of India for decades. It existed because of political patronage. It existed because it suited politicians and their vested interest. BBC here, Raju Gandhi here, and what are you talking about? Casey Pandey here. Sheila Dix is here, H.L. Bhagat is here, and Ram Vilas Paswan is here. There is no one who has come here, or no one who has come here. When we come here, we have a lot of children here, we have a lot of children here. We have a lot of children here, and we have a lot of children here. We have a lot of children here. We have a lot of children here. Yamuna Pushta has been here. He was with love called Pagal Baba. The mad sage. बाद बगीचे बनाने की बात करते हैं, खुशहाली की बात करते हैं ये सरकार। हमसे ज़्यादा खुशहाल बगीचा जाकर देखिए। अगर हमसे ज़्यादा खुशहाल वो बगीचा बना देगा तो मैं सरकार में करा दूँगा। One of the earliest residents of Yamuna Pushta, after a spiritual revelation, 
and I guess that's why he got stuck with the name of Pagal Baba. He began to convert his barren land into a beautiful garden and then built a magnificent temple with well-crafted statues of gods and goddesses. And he also managed a school. All this he supported by selling fruit, five bucks a plate. ये हम दावे से कह सकते हैं इसे तोड़ने की किसी की शक्ति नहीं जितना मर्जी जोर लगा ले मेरा विश्वास वो कुछ नहीं कर सकता मेरा क्योंकि ये मंदिर नहीं है ये चमत्कार है उसका इसमें एक पैसा किसी का नहीं लगा है ऑन डेज व्हेन ही कंडक्टेड स्पेशल प्रेयर्स एंड हवन्स ही फेड यमुना पुष्टा चिल्ड्रन हॉट डिलीशियस फूड नोइंग वेरी वेल दैट द मील ही प्रोवाइडेड टू मोस्ट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन would be the only meal the kids would eat that day isse wo todne ke sahas hi nahi mera ye pur vishwas hai ki jiski maya se mujhe itna koi kuch ho raha hai uski maya kare kisi ki chal hi nahi sakte agar wo chalte hain to iska avashya hi vinash hai A survey conducted by Navjyoti, a social organization that worked for the welfare of the Yamuna Pushta residents, concluded that almost 90% of children were involved in some sort of unskilled labor, rag picking and begging included. Around 50% of the children worked for 8 to 10 hours a day, 24/7. 60% of the children had been assaulted or abused at least once at their workplace or on their way to work. One fourth of the working children were assaulted at least once by the police, and one fifth of them felt that society in general was abusive towards them and viewed them as criminals and anti-social elements. In 1982, Yamuna Pushta came under the purview of Deputy Commissioner of Police, Dr. Kiran Bedi. Interaction with the Yamuna Pushta families. compelled her to start a social organization called Navjyoti This was a very large sprawling area which was almost neglected in policing mm. because it was neglected it I had a lot of complaints from this area and the complaints were that there is a lot of drug peddling going on there's a lot of drug abuse going on So it was like um a hub I became there were pockets not all mm. there were hubs but it was giving a bad impression to the entire locality okay. the further damage was the children were getting part sucked into. part sucked into and they were peddling too okay. and of course we wanted to save children from drug abuse and drug peddling mm. how do we wean them away then we needed to run schools because there were no municipal schools okay. there was no health care and that's how navjyoti was born Navjyoti ran a complete integrated project which had gali schools it had the vocational training center it had the drug rehab center we had balwaris we had remedial it was a complete holistic package we were like family there and working with all of them hand in hand and i feel we were responsible for everything they did there and they felt the same about us it was not only the gali schools but it was a lot to do with women lot to do with women groups lot to do with information sharing uh, navjyoti also had the health center so it it became a kind of integrated uh, project and something fascinating was that the children from the gali school were ultimately being mainstreamed and that was ultimately the aim that they went to the main government schools in over 20 years they got 17 school 14 schools i think These fourteen schools are going to be closed tomorrow. You can't develop fourteen schools there in a day. On in forty in twenty forty years, sir, they have been able to develop one hospital here. The dispensaries, the local doctors. How the how 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 they manage all that there? अब हमारे तो जिंदगी कट गया उसी जगह पर हमारे आने के बच्चे को भविष्यत क्या होंगे? 
अब हम चाहते हैं कि वहाँ ही के वहाँ ही हमारा दिया जाए सही हमारा साल दो साल का टाइम दे अब एक भाई कहाँ हम कहाँ जाएंगे क्या करेंगे कितने दूर पर दे रहा है क्या कर रहा है हम अवरत जब कहाँ कहाँ घूमते फिरेंगे अगर हम भी यहाँ दिल्ली कमाने के लिए आएंगे वहाँ कमाई तो है नहीं रोजगार तो है नहीं हमने देख लिया पप्पन किला सब जगह देख के आए हम लोग वहाँ तो जंगलात है खेत है वहाँ जाके क्या करेंगे हम अगर हमारे बीवी भी यहाँ बर्तन का काम मानने वाला करेगी तो बीस रुपये दस रुपये आने का दस रुपये जाने का दो घंटे ढाई घंटे तो बस में लगी जाएगा पाँच घंटे आने जाना रिटर्न का हो गया तो ये कितने का है ये, ये लाता हूँ मैं वहाँ से हाँ। साढ़े तीन रुपए का और आप पाँच रुपए में बेचते हैं पाँच रुपए में अगर आप वहाँ जाएंगे तो कितना होगा वहाँ जाएंगे तो ये पंद्रह रुपए का पीस पड़ जाएगा पंद्रह रुपए का पीस पंद्रह रुपए का पीस पड़ जाएगा और आने जाने में शाम हो जाएगी हाँ। तो जब बिजनेस वालों को हम फेरी करने के लिए पीस देंगे तो वो ले जाकर बस में आने और जाने में शाम हो जाएगी तो गुजारा भी नहीं कर पाएगा ना खाना उनका नसीब होगा बच्चे न पढ़ पाएंगे ना खा पाएगा उतनी दूर है कि तुम्हारे बच्चे का पेट में खाना खिलाऊ या बीस रुपए किराया देकर मैं खुदाऊँ आप कहाँ जाएंगे हम कहाँ जाएंगे तो किराया पे रहने पड़ेगा बाबू जी अभी तो इससे पैसे तो है नहीं हमारे पास और आपकी बिरादरी कहाँ जाएंगे वो बिरादरी ये जाएंगे ना ये अपना अलग अलग जो कि हमने किराए पर ले लेंगे वहाँ नहीं जाएंगे हाँ नहीं क्यों क्यों ये बजे क्यों दूर पड़ता है क्यों हम हम यहाँ पे हमें जिंदगी में यहाँ पे कमाना खाना हमारा कोई आगे पीछे कोई नहीं है दिल्ली हम यहाँ जाते हैं कमाने खाने के लिए उसे दूर जाते हैं आओ फिर जाओ फिर किराए लो फिर वहाँ तक बीस रुपये जाना आना जाने का ये तो हो सकता आप भी सोचिए ना हम वहाँ से जाएंगे आप मजदूरी करेंगे दो पैसा कमाऊंगी तो बीस रुपये उसी में लग जाते हैं फिर तो खाएंगे कहाँ से हमारा दिल नहीं कर रहा है यहाँ से जाने का तो अगर आ, सरकार टूटने वाली है तो टूटने वाली है तो सरकार को इतना हम अनुरोध करेंगे हाथ जोड़कर हमें आठ सात किलोमीटर की दूरी में जो हमारा बच्चा भी प्रवेश कर सके पढ़ लिख के और हम लोग भी मेहनत से कमा सके मीनिंग ऑफ टू लाइफ पीपल आर बींग अप्रोटेड एंड सेंट टू एब्सोल्यूटली इन ह्यूमन सिचुएशन लाइक इन जंगल फोटोग्राफ इन दैन Um, I can. How can a person become so inhuman just for the want of few words? Were we in the guise of resettlement, really unsettling our people? In the name of relocation, were we dislocating their lives? Those living in slums belong to our own country. They are not aliens. They are not animals. They are. what you and i could become if faith and opportunity were to leave us right today i was keen to see the situation of those who for a few years had already lived in a resettlement colony after relocation did life get better or was it all downhill Thus we decided to visit a resettlement colony which was just a few kilometers away from Bhavana where the Yamuna Pushta residents were being relocated 3 years before the Yamuna Pushta demolitions homes of thousands of families living in Bapudham were demolished and the families were shifted to Holambi Kala Whatever had transpired 3 years prior I feared the same fate was in store for the Yamuna Pushta residents kitne saal se yahan pe yahan pe hua kahan se pehle aap bapu dham chane ke upar hi jo wahan pakka karta hai ha wahan pakka karta hai aur kya kaam karte the wahan pe main wahan pe ek tv repairing ke dukaan pe kaam karta tha abhi 3 saal se ghar mein baitha hu kuch naukri nahi kuch naukri nahi main handicap hu meri wife handicap hai acha ये गरीब बेचारे क्या करेंगे बेगर रोजी रोटी है वहाँ तो नजदीक था तो कोठी बंगले में लोग काम कर लेते धाड़ी मजदूरी कर लेते हैं कुछ न कुछ बसर गुजर बहुत अच्छा हो रहा था वहाँ पे कोई किसी को परी नसानी नहीं है यहाँ तो बेचारे भूखे भूखे बैठे रहते जिसकी नौकरी नहीं है वो क्या करे यहाँ दिल्ली जाते हैं तो पचास रुपये किसी तो उधार ले जाएंगे तो हम रिक्शा चलाएंगे और नहीं मिला रिक्शा तो आप भूखे चले आएंगे वो भी पचास का दम according to human rights principles that that resettlement would have to take place close to where their livelihood is um and but we don't see that so i think that the alternatives are there but the, the question is who is driving the decision making and i think the decision making is not being uh, dictated by people who care for the poor shifting these people to bhavana and holambikala 
their livelihood has been threatened no no it has not been threatened if they if it is done according to the plan then their employment opportunities have been increased because here where what they are coming like lakhs of people are competing for the same job when you put a shop and you have a vegetable seller sitting on the very shop itself or near by the shop he is underselling both of them underselling each other but if you go to new place then anybody gets new job here kahan pe bhi hamara bakre ke meat ka murghe ka kaam tha yahan aakar kal sare din mein ek hi murgha bika hai sabzi wale ekdam wahan par unka vyapar nahi chal sakta रिक्शे वाले जो रोज रोटी कमाते हैं रोज खाते हैं वहां से रिक्शा कमाने के लिए नहीं आ सकते तो उन आदमियों के जीवन में बहुत फर्क पड़ेगा और इससे समाज को फर्क पड़ेगा ये मत सोचिए मैं भूखा हूं आपका रोटी छीन लूंगा यही कारण है क्राइम जो बढ़ता है इसी तरह से बढ़ता है इनका पूर्ण रूप से व्यवस्था न होने के कारण से क्राइम बढ़ता है क्रिमिनल कोई पैदा नहीं होता क्रिमिनल हम बना देते हैं उसे अगर वहाँ चला गया तो आदमी को भीख मांगेगा वो भी भीख नहीं मिलेगी क्योंकि वहाँ पर आदमी नहीं देगा कौन भीख भी लाइफ इज मच हार्डर इन द रिसेटलमेंट कॉलोनीज फॉर वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रीजन विच इज दट इवन दो दे माइट हैव लीगल एक्सेस टू शेल्टर बाय एंड लार्ज दीज रिसेटलमेंट कॉलोनीज आर वेरी वेरी फार अवे फ्रॉम वेर पीपल वर्क सो अ नंबर ऑफ मैन हैव बीन रेंडर्ड अनएम्प्लॉयड because earlier they would you know they would do something like um, they would they would carry loads or they would have small mm-hmm. vending um, uh, businesses etc and now the cost of commuting from the new place to the place where they originally work it can be as much as 40 or 50 yeah. rupees a day so it's impossible for people to make ends meet uh, in the, if they've been resettled which means that a lot of them um, just end up losing their their jobs um and have the drastic uh, you know experience of having to then come up with new source of livelihood uh, to uh, to order to, in order to get by koi sadhan nahi hai bas ke liye humne har kisi ko bol rakhe likh ke de rakhe copy bhi hamare paas hai lekin aaj tak hame aapka medical ka bus nahi laga yahan pe aisi koi facility nahi thi pani agar aata hai to aise bilkul peele rang ka pani aata hai jisko peene mein bhi heek aati hai बदबू आती है उसके अंदर नाली बना दी है लेकिन इस पानी का रास्ता नहीं दिया छोटे छोटे बच्चे मच्छर पैदा होते हैं बीमार आए दिन बीमार रहते हैं बच्चे यहाँ पे कैट्स के तीसरी साल हो गए यहाँ पे आए हुए ना तो कोई सुविधा है हमारे लिए ना कुछ और देख लो दुनिया की गंदगी फैली हुई है ना तो ये सफाई करवाते हैं ना कुछ और बच्चे भी हर महीने बीमार होते हैं कोई दवाई के लिए डिस्पेंसरी नहीं है ये शौचालय है और देखो इसको आज के तीसरी साल हो गई बने हुए हम खेतों में लेटरिंग के लिए जाते हैं ना तो इसको सफाई करवाते ना चालू करवाते हैं अब बताओ आप कि क्या करा जाए हम तो बहुत दिन हो गए इतने परेशान होते होते तंग हो गए अभी यहाँ होलम्बी कला में यमुना पूछता कि आदमी लोग आ रहे हैं तो क्या होगा ऐसा है जी देखो यहाँ पे कोई काम धंधा तो है नहीं ना जो आएगा वो भी पछताएगा इससे अच्छा तो ना ही आए तो ही अच्छा है क्योंकि जब यहाँ पे पूरी सुविधाएं होने चाहिए जब ही आदमी आ सकता है नहीं तो कोई फायदा नहीं है यहाँ पे आने से वहाँ सरकार ने एक पानी रख रखा उन्होंने लेटरिन घर मार की और कुछ सुविधा नहीं वहाँ बिल्कुल नहीं है अब पानी को चाटेंगे या लेटरिंग करेंगे जब पेट में दाना नहीं है तो लेटरिंग भी नहीं आएगा सो लेट देम बी गिवन लेट देम प्रिपेयर द प्लेस वेयर द शिफ्टिंग आफ्टर एंड देन शिफ्ट देम आफ्टर शिफ्टिंग देम फ्रॉम स्लम एंड क्रिएटिंग एन अ स्लम दैन मेक सेंस मे बी मे बी देर नॉट बिल्ड वोट हेयर एंड सॉल राइट बट टूडे दे आर लिविंग इन टू सम हैबिटेबल कंडीशन विच दे आर एबल टू डेवलप फॉर लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स एंड यू आर पुटिंग पुटिंग दैम इन टू एब्सोलूटली अनहेबिटेबल कंडीशन so it will take some time before we can get them the kind of water that they need to have there now we've also told everybody several times over please let us know what it is so that we can also plan you know it's not easy to set up uh, electricity wires or to set up pipes taking water it takes time set up road set up a dispensary set up a uh, school set up a, a bus so there is this mismatch where the delhi development authority sometimes goes and does things on its own and we are then asked now provide so it does take about a year year and a half two years sometimes to set things down uh because i uh, for instance those who have been moved in holambikala holambikala has grown up but that resettlement to my mind is is not human you know the slum dwellers are also not free from uh, trouble they have their own uh, weaknesses one slum dweller you put to in halambikulam give them the plot of land he'll sell it to somebody else and come back to yamuna pushta and occupy it again jab yahan kaam hai hi nahi hai bhooke pade hain to kya karenge jab rozgar nahi hai to kahin bhi insaan chala jayega 
वो चला जाता है तो इस गवर्नमेंट कहती है हमने जगह दे दिया जी वो बेच के भग गए एंड पीपल विद नो मीन्स ऑफ लाइवलीहुड विल ट्राई एंड लिव इन द मोस्ट अबिजमल कंडीशन जस्ट इन ऑर्डर टू सर्वाइव और लीव द एरिया वे दे आर री एलोकेटेड एंड गो बैक टू एन अदर एरिया इन द अर्बन सेंटर एंड फॉर्म एन अदर स्लम ये सरकार हमारे लिए कोई अच्छा नहीं कर रही है बुराई कर रही है जाते एक बम का गोला ले ले तो सबको मार दे I was informed by a number of local leaders and pradhans that due to police pressure and with demolitions being inevitable from the very next day families were going to demolish their own homes in order to salvage whatever little they could of their meager belongings I wanted to walk the streets of Yamuna Pushta where peace and tranquility prevailed for the last night said this at one point of time that housing is a fundamental right but today i don't think that the majority of the judges believe in this anymore they don't view this issue as a human rights issue they you they view this issue as an encroachment issue but they they should not forget they are dealing with human beings they are dealing with children and they already live with such poor infrastructure and such abysmal conditions and no human being wants to live in those conditions he can only live in those conditions because he has no other alternative now you are depriving them also of the alternative that they don't want an informed judiciary will be one that is responsible responsive and looks at this overall paradigm and understanding of development if it has been the one to order the demolitions has to then ask what are you going to do with these people have you put a rehabilitation program in place have you identified the space in which these people are going to go what kind of infrastructure have you created for them are you disrupting their lives or are you creating their lives all over again all of these questions should be asked before making the order so you have judgments which have used phrasing that is very negative connotations like calling slum dwellers pick pockets or saying that these are these are not desirable elements or saying that well these people do not deserve to have a settlement so essentially saying that they are less human than others i think it's it's contrary to their human rights obligations or constitutional obligations because those obligations indicate that you have to take care of the most vulnerable first somebody said how will they exercise their right to vote why are you doing it for the election and such such some judge remarked why can't they vote i mean the judge should know that nobody can travel 30 kilometers people with no means cannot travel 30 kilometers to vote i mean this if this is the level of understanding the, at the level of the judiciary then i'm afraid uh, we're in for bad times the judge who is making a pronouncement also want to be on the right side the right side is to be seen as articulated side okay. the slum man doesn't have a voice 
where will we articulate? Whereas the middle class, the media in general, articulates. Dozens of letters come to the press. Articles get printed. And that, in a way, I would say, intimidates even the judiciary. I wouldn't say, Ruzbeir, it's judiciary not taking a responsible role. I would say, um, uh, as proactive a role as it could. Okay. So I think, again, the poor and the powerless is not a very major issue for any arm of the criminal justice system, mm. whereas they could. पुलिस तो कुछ नहीं बताती साहब रोज आके रोज तोड़ने का ऑर्डर दे जाती है उनको तो अच्छा है कि बुलडोजर नहीं चलाना पड़ेगा लोग अपने आप तोड़ के जा रहे हैं गवर्नमेंट का काम पब्लिक खुद ही कर रही है हमारे सारे बच्चे हैं हम कैसे चलेंगे जा जाएंगे भूखे बने हवा लग गई है न चल पाओ न बैठ पाओ न कहीं जा पाओ कहाँ जंगल में जाएंगे कैसे इसको लाद ले जाएंगे ना पानी ना खाना ना कुछ ना कुछ ये गरीबों को उजाड़ा तो आसमान भी रोने लगा बारिश हुई और इन गरीबों के लिए ना तो इनकी सर्वे हुई ना इनको कोई मुआवजा मिला और इनको पुलिस वालों ने हुकुम दे दिया कि अपना घर फोड़ डालो अपने यहाँ बिचारे गरीब आदमी घर फोड़ दिया बताओ अब इन गरीबों को मुआवजा मिलना चाहिए नहीं मिलना चाहिए ये भी तो हिंदुस्तान के नागरिक है आज से चालीस साल साल पैंसठ से रहने वाले आदमी तरफ तरफ के बच्चे मर रहे पानी नहीं गवर्नमेंट ने दिया ना कोई खाना ना पीना बुलडोजर चला दिया पर्ची हाथ में थमा दिया गाड़ी का नंबर नहीं गाड़ी यहाँ से है नहीं और चार चार दिन में छह छह दिन में परेशानी हो रही बताओ क्या किया जाए इन गरीबों के लिए हम गरीब की यही आवाज है की जैसे आसमान रोया वैसे वो उसकी औलाद रोए और हम कहाँ जाएंगे विधवा जवन जवन लड़कियाँ लेकर रोड में बैठा लेंगे क्या हम जाएंगे नहीं वहाँ मर जाएंगे यहीं I don't think there was anything called transition. Transition happens when you have people to discuss, you have somebody to talk to, you have somebody to go to. But who do you go to? I mean, if you go to court, you're fighting with them, and you can't fight with the court here. You already know the result. So there was really nothing called transition. It was about making sure that our people reach home safely. Home is barren land. Um, there's no bloodshed. Children are not killed because there can. There was a group that wanted to come in front of the bulldozers and let the bulldozers ram all over them, and we didn't want that. So I think the role that uh, we've played, and I personally wanted to make sure that it all happens very smoothly. Um, they reach Bavana safely. I mean, it was not only moving these people out of that situation, but also, I think, uh, kind of emotional balm they had to give to the people. And I think that moment, it was very important that there was somebody behind them. In Gharibon, ne sees karke aaj ek ye jannat banaya. Gharib ke liye to ye jannat hi hai. Unki liye dekhne mein chahe wo jagmohan ho, ya Atal Bihari ji ho, unki nazaron mein ye chiz buri hai. Lekin hamare liye to ye jannat hai. आज हमारी इस जन्नत को उजाड़ने में उन लोगों का हाथ है क्यों है अगर यही था तो उस दिन हमें बसने नहीं दिया जाता पहले पहले नहीं बसने दिया जाता आज वो हमें उजाड़ रहे हैं किस बिना पर उजाड़ रहे द राइटिंग वॉज ऑन द वॉल एंड डेमोलेशन वॉज इनएिटेबल स्कूल मेडिकल सेंटर्स वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग वर्कशॉप ऑफ नवज्योति टू वर गोइंग टू बी बुलडोज the navjyoti staff began the shift to bhavana All of us put in a lot of effort 
I remember plastering the walls, painting it, making it, making it nice for the children, and it, the children love to come here. But uh, like you can see, we did a lot of advocacy. We did a lot of networking, asking for a school because we were educating so many children. There was nowhere to mainstream them to, and till we got one school here started, which is the MCD Contemporary School, and. After a lot of advocacy, a lot of meetings, eventually they started running in tents. Now, when the, the whole of Yamuna Pushta is breaking all around, the only place that you can see where there's construction going on is the school. I mean, and it's MCD doing the demolition. Uh, right now, this place we are in is the uh, MCD school in Yamuna Pushta. This is a very, very nice classroom that we see over here. But unfortunately, the children that this school was made for didn't get even a day's chance to, uh, to study here. The cancer of homelessness owes its genesis to unplanned and callous demolitions. The more insensitive the level of demolitions, without a rehabilitation plan, the greater the level of homelessness in the city. बस अपने बच्चों को लेकर के इसी पड़े हुए अपने घर का जेवरात सोना चांदी बेच के 4 लाख रुपए में जीएसटीडी खड़ा किया हुआ आज उसको 9000 रुपए में बेचना पड़ रहा है साहब क्या करें किराए तक का पैसा नहीं है सामान को लेके कहां घूमेगा फुटपाथ पे ही जगह है बस barely 20% of those displaced were allotted plots of land the remaining 80% were forced to take refuge on the streets along with their salvaged belongings until they found some way out of their miserable plight you demolish one slum, you create ten more, as the poor have no other place to go. Nobody returns to their villages for the simple reason there is nothing left to return to. Nobody lives in a slum out of choice. It really is a matter of life and death. Indu Prakash Singh, a social reformer who works for the homeless and the abandoned, after a lot of sweat and toil, persuaded the authorities to convert the vacant school that was being built when the entire Yamuna Pushta was being demolished into a shelter for the homeless. It took him two long years. Hindu, what's going on here? Uh, well, this is a shelter okay. that uh, we are running for uh, women, for children and for men as well as for recovering addicts. Okay. And uh, here, uh, you know, uh, women get food as well as children okay. and children normally go to school okay. uh, at the daytime and they come back here you run this for the government we we are running it because uh, you know uh, Ashra Dikar Abhihan yeah. is working for with the homeless okay and uh, you know until we started the work in 2000 okay. you know uh, government has no such uh, plan they had only ran by Seras. What is that? Ranvesera is just a nice shelter. Okay. It's a nice shelter which opens, uh, used to open from 7 uh, in the night until 7 in the morning. Yeah. This is only a night shelter or is it day and night? Uh, well, in fact, uh, it's a 24 hour shelter. It's a 24 hour shelter. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, you know, because we realized during the start of the work, huh. when we did the survey in 2000, that uh, homeless people were also working in the night. So the issue is actually where do they sleep? At the daytime. And earlier the government did not have any kind of plan for these kind nothing, of people? Nothing, nothing. We, you know, we had crossed 50 years of independence and the concept was just a nice shelter. And that too, a nice shelters or any shelter that was meant for homeless was only for men, not a single shelter for women. There wasn't a single shelter for women? No. Till, no. till which year? Uh, till uh, 2002, hmm. you know, when we uh, got cracking with a uh, lot of organizations. And we created a shelter just behind Bangla Sahib Gurdwara in the wider wider premises. Given night in Delhi, how many homeless people are there? Well, uh, not less than hundred thousand people. 
there are approximately about 6,000 to 10,000 women on the streets. What about children? As per a survey done by Butterflies, uh, there are about more than 30,000 children on the streets. Ever since the demolitions happened, mm. you know, like the numbers of homeless people around Jama Masjid and this area really swelled. And recently we have seen that people, you know, who have got, uh, you know, places somewhere in Bawa, you know, Balasawa, ba yeah. Bawana and all, which is 45 km from this place, mm. in Napusta. Now, that person would be on a footpath for a week, 10 days, for a fortnight, and only go in one weekend to the home. It's, it's a whole new dimension which has come up, where men are coming back living with their children in, in another place here mm. to work for a whole month or week and then they go back. go back. So it's becoming women oriented run slum and men are traveling back to the city to find work and stay put in the city. So it's in a way taken men away from their own families, fathers away from their own families and including children. The growth of homelessness in, in Delhi um, in the last 10 years uh, the incredible growth of homelessness is directly a result of state policy. In my opinion, uh, it is one of the worst forms of human rights violation. I know of people who were locked up for a long time. The way the demolitions took place in such a short span of time, people not even given time to collect their belongings. It was just like a war zone. Uh, it was that somebody had just bombed the area. The Human Rights Commission also only has uh, a recommending power. Hmm. It can't actually prosecute. So, whatever their recommendations, um, they can only be taken note of by the courts. But ultimately, it's the power of the courts that is ultimate. I would say it's just a paper tiger. It again is an institution of the government. The role of the media is erratic. Okay. It's disappointing because much of it is depends upon quote unquote whether the story is sexy or not. Okay. 40, 24 hour channels and you know over 40,000 newspapers, everybody was breaking news and a homeless person dying or there were 100,000 people getting evicted is not making breaking news. So that is a tragedy whereas Amitabh Bachchan being sick is breaking news. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Yamuna Pushra demolitions uh, and how they were covered by the media, I think it's astonishing that as many as 20,000 families by conservative estimate could be evicted, mm. a lack displaced mm. and uh, newspapers like Times of India, Hindustan Times carrying no more than a paragraph perhaps. So in some ways they reflect not just their own corporate interest but also the mindset of a middle class population in Delhi. The whole thing of I would say an anti-poor attitude mm. is very strong in the media also. Because media is based on sponsorship, mm. media is based on commercial money, commercial for running. So why would they go where there is no purchasing power? So it's all commerce. Media is also commerce. Five minutes here and a six minute there. And I, I think doesn't make it pro-sensitive to poor. Trying to report is one thing, but trying to understand the complexity of trying to represent uh, voices that are 
very soft, cannot be heard, that are disempowered. I mean, that would really be the ideal kind of media, of which I'd, perhaps there are one or two um, newspapers or magazines or such, but predominantly, no, I don't think so. Forced eviction is a violation of the protection rights of every child. The way in which it stares right in the face is, is a loss of a home. It's the loss of a protective environment because a home represents security, protection to every child. It also establishes a sense of stability in a child's life, all of which is lost the moment a home is taken away from a child. For a child, even if you break a little khilona of theirs or tumble out a sand structure or something, it's enough of a shock, right? But to have adults whom they may have thus far experienced as caregivers, as parents, as people in the community, as dada, dadi, masi, chacha, chachi, you suddenly have adults who come and just demolish. So I think it's just one of utter shock. Those who were forced to shift to Bhavana had to spend more than a week on the streets. The reason was simple. Those in charge of allotting the families their plots of land didn't bother showing up. The land allotted to each family was on a five-year lease. Thus there was no guarantee of permanent residentship. After five years, they could be kicked out of Bhavana too. Since they're poor, they've got no stake in the city. Since they're poor, and the homeless people, you know, would not be able to wash themselves for days at length, you know, so you have to beautify the city, which means that you have to throw them out of everybody's uh, view. Mm. And because the city has to be beautiful. Delhi has to be Shanghai. You know, Delhi has to be Singapore. Yeah. It's has to be a world class city. You know, so hence, you know, like uh, these people, you know, the poor, the urban poor, who we say are homeless, actually are living on the fringes of the city. And hence, you know, since they have no voice, no politician talk about it, they can be dumped anywhere. हाँ से तो खार के भेद दिए ये धूप में न कोई साधन है न कोई चीज़ है न खाने का माने का जगह न कुछ नहीं है नाम का सोचाले बाकी ज़्यादा पे जाते हैं लेटिंग ज़्यादा पे जय रुपया मांगते हैं गरीब आदमी कहाँ से देंगे सोचाले का पैसा घर में आठ बच्चे हैं वो आठ रुपया लेंगे तो खाएंगे क्या और पानी का ये है कि सुबह दो घंटे मिलते हैं दो घंटे दोपहर में और दो घंटे शाम को है और इस बीच में आप जो भर लिए भर लिए नहीं तो फिर बैठो उसका अगर शौचालय से पीने के लिए भी एक बोतल लेने जाते हैं तो एक रुपया दो जी एक गैलन पानी लेना है तो एक रुपया दो एक गैलन एक जोरे कपड़ा धुलाई करना है तो एक रुपये दो ये शौचालय वाले का नियम है कहते हैं नहीं दोगे तो नहीं बच्चे के लिए एक रुपये चाहिए हर चीज़ के ऊपर कर लगा दिया गया है ये बताओ जब हम यहाँ से मजदूरी नहीं कर सकते तो इनको देंगे कहाँ से और पाया उनके पास बिल्कुल नील है वो लोग कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं जिनके पास रोटी तक की सुविधा नहीं है इधर ढाई घंटे लोग कर्जा लेके ही सात हजार रूपए उन्होंने गवर्नमेंट को दिए हैं और यहाँ उनके पास कोई पैसा किसी चीज की कोई सुविधा नहीं
the yamuna pushta families lost all that they possessed and had to even borrow money 7000 bucks in all to lease the 12 by 12 plot of land aaj ye sukhi roti kha raha hai ye jagmohan ki meharbani hai तीस साल पहले जब मैं आया था यहाँ यमुना पुस्ता के अंदर तो सिर्फ मेरे पास सिर्फ टिकट का पैसा था और खाने का पैसा था जब मैंने धीरे धीरे करके बनाया कुछ और बनाने के बाद झुग्गी बनाई मेहनत किया काम लगाया लाइसेंस बनाया नौकरी लगाई नौकरी लगाने के बाद में जब मैंने पढ़ा थोड़ा पढ़ने के बाद सब कुछ मेरा हो गया सेटलमेंट तब मेरे पास थोड़ा बहुत पैसा आया घर भर दिया छटाई का घर बनाया उसके बाद जितना कमाया था वो टूटने में लग गया इधर खाने में लग गया जहाँ तीस साल पीछे थे फिर उसी तरह फिर हो गए पक्के मकान थे हमारे अच्छा सारे तोड़ के यहाँ पर भेज दिया अब यहाँ देख लो सर सामान बच्चे हमारे भूखे मर रहे हैं न यहाँ पानी है बच्चे मच्छर इतने काट रहे हैं कि मलेरिया हो जाएगा रात भर हमारे बच्चे सोते नहीं है यहाँ पर पानी भी नहीं है न बिजली है न सोने का ढंग है न झुग्गी और झोपड़ी सब कुछ ऐसी और अच्छा कुछ बिल्डिंग बिल्डिंग कुछ बिल्डिंग नहीं है एक बोर्ड लगा हुआ है कि ये प्राइमरी स्कूल है तो बनते बनते दो तीन साल हो जाएगा नहीं नहीं बोर्ड है बोर्ड देख कर तसली कर रहे हैं कि प्राइमरी स्कूल है और ये सेकेंडरी स्कूल है डिस्पेंसरी है अच्छा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू दॉर्पोरेट इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी ऑफ द सिटी आर पीपल हु आर लाइबिलिटीज टू दिटी ओके सो एंड दे वुड लाइक टू सी दीज पीपल रिमूव फ्रॉम सेंट्रल एरिया सिटी एंड देन फ्रोन टू पेरीफरी और हिडन इन प्लेस विच आर नॉट विजिबल टू द कि अगर सरकार इसको चाहे तो सब सारे बच्चे को अनाथ आश्रम में भर्ती कर दिया जाए द होल प्रमाइज दैट अर्बनाइजेशन डिवेलपमेंट ग्रोथ ऑफ सिटीज कैन टेक प्लेस ओनली वेन सम पीपल आर मार्जिनलाइज इज इज अ इज अ फलिशियस प्रमाइज इट्स बेस्ड ऑन ऑन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ इन एक्विटी राधर देन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ एक्विटी एंड जस्टिस एंड दैट इज वे सम the dem demolition seem okay it's okay for some people you know, at at the cost of some people we we will have a beautiful city well i think the the gravest danger is that we are creating cities and and a society where there is actually what we are seeing is a form of sort of urban and rural apartheid where we are seeing a very clear distinction between where the rich will live and where the poor will live and and usually the rich are living in more and more you see gated communities that are cut off from the rest of the society you're seeing uh, areas where you have full services you know water sanitation and everything and then you're seeing areas where you don't have with the way the construction is going into i don't know whether they again would get pushed out because there is nothing to be built within the city hmm. it's the outskirts which are going to provide land for the growth and multi and i doubt whether these ghettos will if you call we call them ghettos hmm. even they last long कोई पार्टी कोई मदद नहीं कर रही मैंने झुग्गी जो है खुद अपने आप बनाई है मेरे भाई ने मिलकर बनाई है दोनों भाई ने मिलकर किसी ने किसी प्रकार की मदद नहीं करी है मैं वोट किसी को नहीं दूंगा the alternative is to is to consider the slum dweller as a human being and a legitimate citizen of the city mm. they don't seem to be at present enjoying the status of a legitimate citizen i am a migrant to the city okay. but i seem to be a legitimate citizen hame bhawan se laad jagah nahi mili hai private bus wahan band kar di gayi hai aur government bus jo chal rahi hai unhe bhi bhawan chauk pe se khali karwaya diya khali karwa diya ja raha hai kisi public ko aane nahi diya ja raha wahan मैं खुद बड़ी मुसीबत से यहाँ आया हूँ बहुत परेशानी करके अपने वोट डालने के लिए रोक रही है 
गाली एक दिन ही आने दे रहा पब्लिक वहाँ औरतें बच्चे परेशान हाल में हो रहे वहाँ पीपल डोंट स्पॉट ऑन पब्लिक लैंड बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट दे डू इट बिकॉज इट नॉट अ चॉइस बाय लार्ज दीज अ वेरी पोअर वर्नरेबल पीपल दे नॉट लैंड ग्रैबर्स एंड इफ डेली हैड दी प्रोविजन ऑफ अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग nobody wants to live under threat of being demolished and you know their, their homes uh, and families scattered at all unless we hold state accountable the state will get away with what it's doing and we have to train people to hold state accountable to ask questions kisi hum tumko vote diya tha lekin now i have to come back and perform kisi ne tv mein dikhaya jhuki ho koi serial wala aaye nahi hai hamare bachche wala you work on social conflict political conflict with children gradually let them evolve on their own and and the solution to the housing crisis in delhi is a, is a, it has to be a city wide solution so we have to call for upgradation where it's possible we have to say okay i would agree there are places where people would have to be moved because they're living in dangerous conditions or they're living in very high density areas so there it has to be a people centered policy for relocation and it should not be just driven by calculation for land supreme court has declared housing to be a fundamental right and therefore in order to implement that fundamental right on behalf of those people who do not have any houses of their own and are being forced to live in the jhuggi jhopri colonies certainly one can go to court and the court should order the government to develop those lands which have already been earmarked for the weaker sections and provide housing first of all prevent bringing up a slum mm. if it happens then they are human beings they are children they are men they are women their lives involved mm. their livelihoods involved therefore it's so critical that we have a proper rehab plan where again they stay put there and not just thrown on a under the sky but That's they also have work they have education they have which comes later are regrettable which comes over a period which should come actually is a package now that we learn to lesson that relocation is very very painful mm. very painful a pain that they'll never individuals affected will never forget all their lives and social costs will be very very high spare a thought for the poor who have been forced to come to the city in search of survival they spend their entire life serving and making our world so much better they ask not much but a little space to call home and live life with dignity and stability and not be forever judged as outcast and the damned no mother wants to bring a child up in a slum families live in slums not out of choice but because it is a matter of survival solution.